Hello everyone, my name is Maria and today I am going to talk to you about an absolute classic in scientific literature, presenting A Brief History of Time by Stephen Hawking. This was a sort of spontaneous read as I am waiting for other ebooks in my library to arrive, but damn, I am happy that I still got to read it. In his book, Hawking explains several advanced physics topics, including the expanding universe, elementary particles, time travel, and the past and future of the universe. Anyways, if you end up enjoying this video, please like it and subscribe to my YouTube channel, it really helps, and only 1.6% of my viewers are actually subscribed. Thank you so much. Stephen Hawking I am sure most people have heard this name. Hawking was a genius, English theoretical physicist and cosmologist, and at the time of his death in 2018, he was the director of research at the Center for Theoretical Cosmology at the University of Cambridge. The impressiveness of his work and himself is amplified when you find out that from his early 20s, he has had Lou Gehrig's disease, a form of a motor neuron disease. I could make a whole video about his extraordinary life and the value of his work, but for now, let's move on to the discussion of his most popular book that has sold millions around the world. The first few chapters are pretty simple to understand for a person with almost no knowledge. Hawking explains the history of our understanding, or lack thereof, of the universe and talks about major historical figures who have pushed its exploration to a newer level. After that came the topic which I found absolutely fascinating, space and time, theory of relativity and the expanding universe. The theory of general relativity is basically that gravitational force warps space in 3D, contrary to popular belief that it is some magical invisible force that is also flat. The more massive the object is, the more warped the space around it is. Another prediction of general relativity is that time should run slower near a massive body like the Earth. This is because there is a relation between the energy of light and its frequency, and as light travels up Earth's gravitational field, it loses energy, causing its frequency to go down. Here is an example from the book that I found very interesting and very illustrative. An experiment conducted in 1962. Two very accurate clocks were placed at the top and the bottom of a water tower. The difference in the clocks was quite noticeable. The clock at the bottom was found to run slower than the one at the top, in accordance with the theory of general relativity. It, it is important practically as well, because many systems rely on time in the sky. All measurements have to account for the theory of general relativity. The fundamental postulate of the theory of relativity was that the laws of science should be the same for all freely moving observers, and that space and time are dynamic quantities. So any normal object is confined by relativity because it cannot move at the speed of light or otherwise its mass would be infinite, as demonstrated with the famous equation by Albert Einstein, energy is mass times speed of light squared. Okay, so another topic that I found interesting was Friedman's model. Alexander Friedman was a Russian physicist and mathematician who, in simple terms, made several assumptions about the universe. He was the first one to propose that the universe was roughly almost the same in every direction. Friedman endorsed the idea that the universe was constantly expanding, which kind of meant that there was a beginning of it, since clearly there must have been a time when the distance between its objects, between all the matter in the universe, was zero. This beginning was named the Big Bang. On the screen you see Friedman's model. There are three that obey his assumptions, so there are several scenarios for the universe to follow. Number one, and the one that Friedman found, was that the universe expanded sufficiently slowly, the gravitational attraction between different galaxies slows down, the universe starts contracting, and eventually there is the end, the big crunch. The second scenario is that the universe expands like crazy, and no gravitational forces will ever cause it to contract. The third one is that the universe will start slowing down on its expansion, but it will never really stop, it will just be slower. Anyways, 
These are just some topics I have found really interesting. They gave a lot of food to my mind and I hope to read some more books about this topic. This was A Brief History of Time by Stephen Hawking and I hope I have managed to make the topics I talked about to sound as attractive as they did to me when I first read about them. So thank you guys for watching, leave a like if you enjoyed this video, subscribe, check out the links in my description for my Fiverr gigs and my blog, and bye!